The views expressed on this program are those of the producers and individuals appearing on this program and do not necessarily reflect the views of the Sun Prairie Media Center staff, its video service providers, or the staff and elected officials of the City of Sun Prairie. Welcome to Simply Fun Cooking. I'm Rachel Hansen, and I'm really excited you are here. I am getting ready for the big Super Bowl game coming up, and I wanted to share a couple of recipes with you as I get ready for big, the big game day. So we are having some people over. We're trying to figure out what to make, and you know what? We decided that game day just isn't game day without some recipes with beer in it. So today, all of our recipes have beer in it. I'm actually starting out with making um, some beer bread. This is actually a Pampered Chef beer bread mix. Um, just mixing the, the mix with some eggs and some beer. I'm going to slowly mix them together. We're also going to make some Wisconsin beer cheese soup with some fresh popped popcorn on top as a garnish. We're going to make some Doppelbach barbecue meatballs and a beer caramelized onion dip. But then for dessert, we're going to make a turtle fudge microwave cake. Yeah, turtle fudge cake in the microwave in eight minutes. And of course, it has a chocolate bock in it. So all sorts of really great things on tap for you today. So first, we're just getting this beer bread mix ready to go. Like I said, it's super easy. It's just our Pampered Chef beer bread mix. Um, and I'm just mixing it as the back of the package says. A couple eggs and a bottle of beer. Now, of course, you could always make this recipe and you could use any kind of carbonated beverage you would like, but it's not beer bread without the beer. You can also play around with the different flavors. I'm doing a real basic lager in here today, but you can play around. Wheat beers work really well since it's bread. Um, you can play around with some different flavors. You could make it a little bit darker with a little bit darker beer. You can make it lighter with a lighter beer. But we're just going to mix this all up until all of that beer is mixed in. You'll notice I'm pouring in just a little bit at a time. I have found in the past that that works much better than trying to pour it all in at once because beer bubbles up when you pour it. And this just helps you keep control. So we're going to mix this up and then we're going to put it in the stoneware loaf pan. I love using stoneware to bake because nothing sticks. It comes out real nice and golden brown all the way around. Nothing sticks. So we're going to just put this right into our stone and we're going to throw it in the oven at 350 for about 45 minutes or so, give or take, depending on the oven. I don't want to have too many chunks that are too big, so I'm just kind of giving it a good mix just to make sure we have a, a fairly even mixture here. But like I said, leaving some of those chunks intact. All right, so we're going to go ahead and just pour this right into our stone or loaf pan. and then we'll throw this in the oven. Now you can also mix up your beer bread by adding some other ingredients. You can add in some cheese or some salsa if you want to just give it a little extra kick. Today we're going to make just the basic beer bread since we're going to have all sorts of other fun ingredients in the soup, in the meatballs. We don't need any extra flavors in the beer bread. I also like to cover my bread when I'm first cooking it just so that the top doesn't get too brown. So I'm just going to cover it up. This is one of our stretch fit silicone lids and it has a little vent hole here so we can just cover it up. This is reusable, it's dishwasher safe. I use it to store the bread also when we're done. I'm just going to put it right on there so we can throw it in the oven. No need for foil anymore. So I'm going to put this in and I'll be right back. All right, next up, I'm super excited. We are going to make this beer cheese soup, and we're going to make it in the deluxe cooking blender. This is going to be so easy. We're just going to chop up everything, really roughly chop it up, because this is going to blend it all for us. We're going to throw it in. We're going to hit the soup setting, 
and we're just going to set it aside and let it do its thing while we get everything else ready. We don't have to stand over the stove. We don't have to watch things, make sure they don't boil over. We're going to put in a couple of stalks of celery. I have three stalks here. And I've got three carrots. I'm going to add in some onion. I'm just going to take an onion and just, again, give it a rough chop. And we'll throw that in. We have two cups of milk. And we'll have one and a half cups of chicken broth or chicken stock. And I, of course, love to always make it myself right as I'm about to cook. It's so much easier just to keep this on hand in the pantry than to have cans or boxes, especially when you only need a little bit. Now, of course, this is not beer cheese soup without our beer. So we are actually going to use um, a Bavarian-style lager for this one. So we give it a little bit of depth. So we're going to add in a half a teaspoon of ground mustard. We're also going to add a little bit of Dijon mustard. A little bit of your favorite chili sauce, just about a teaspoon or so. And then we need to add a teaspoon of Worcestershire. And of course, a little bit of garlic. And for this recipe, since everything's going in the blender, we don't need to mince it up. We just need to take the peels off. Now, since we're making a soup, when we put the lid on, I'm also going to put on, we've got this little boil over cover that can go in here so that as the soup is boiling, if any of it were to accidentally think about bubbling up and bubbling over, it'll actually collect right in this cup and then we won't have a mess. So we're going to go ahead and turn this to soup, to our soup setting, and it's going to heat this up to 212 degrees for us. It's just going to kind of mix, it's going to chop, and it's going to heat at the same time. We'll be able to see as it goes how it's doing. Right now it's at 57 degrees, so we know it has a ways to go, but you see it'll just kind of It'll chop things up and then it'll just kind of sit and heat up for a little bit. So I'm going to set this aside and we're going to get ready to prep our next recipe while this cooks. All right, for our Doppelbach barbecue meatballs, this is actually a recipe you can make in your slow cooker or we're going to make it in the quick cooker so we can have it done really fast. And of course, we can keep it warm right in here. We can use this as a slow cooker as well, but we're just going to get these done so they're ready to go. So we're going to start by making the sauce. Now the sauce for the meatballs is going to have a few different ingredients in it. We are going to start with a cup of ketchup. Now if you have, they actually do make root beer barbecue sauce. You could put a half a cup of root beer barbecue sauce in here. If you don't have such a thing, we're going to make our own. And that is super easy. It is going to be a fourth of a cup of root beer, and a fourth of a cup of barbecue sauce. So there's our root beer. Fourth of a cup of brown sugar in here first. And then fourth of a cup of barbecue. And they recommend a nice sweet barbecue sauce. We want a nice sweet flavor to our meatballs. They'll complement the richness of the Doppelbach real well. So push that in there like that. We're going to add a little bit of red wine vinegar, two tablespoons worth. We're going to add a little bit of the Pampered Chef garlic rub. I'm going to add half of a teaspoon. And then, don't forget your Doppelback. <laughs> smells real sweet. All right. And then we're going to add in our meatballs. I'm putting in four pounds. You can do anywhere between two to four pounds. 
however many you need for your get together. If you want extra sauce, you could always double that batch. I'm just going to give these a little mix to get some sauce on all of them. And after they're done cooking, we can actually take these meatballs out. We could put them on a platter and we could put that sauce on the side. So have some extra dipping sauce. Or you can leave them right in your slow cooker or your quick cooker and everyone can grab some of that sauce when they grab their meatballs. And before we close it up, just a little bit of salt and pepper on top. Now remember, your quick cooker is a pressure cooker, and so it cooks using steam. And that means you need to have some sort of liquid in there. And for this recipe, that sauce is all the liquid that we need. So we're just going to close this up then, and we're going to set it to the beef setting. All right, for our caramelized onion dip, we are going to need a few different things, uh, a few different ingredients. First, bacon. So delicious. Can't go wrong with bacon, right? So I'm just, I just have four pieces of nice thick cut bacon. I'm just sauteing it up in the pan here, getting it nice and crispy. And we're just going to, now that we have it crispy, I'm just going to set it aside. We're going to just put it in this batter bowl. We're going to chop it up in a few minutes. But I'm just going to let it cool a little bit first. All right, now for the onions, we are going to caramelize them right in this pan. I'm going to turn the heat down just a little bit for right now because we have to get the onions chopped up. Now when we caramelize foods, what we're doing is we're really bringing the sugars out of those foods and they're going to turn, the reason it's called caramelized, a nice dark brown color. And since we want that sweetness, we're actually going to add to this a little bit, just a tablespoon of brown sugar. We're going to mix that in. And then we're going to start caramelizing these onions. Now, if you already had your bacon cooked, or if you decide not to put bacon in this dish, instead of that bacon grease, you would use about a tablespoon of olive oil. So turn this up a little bit. And I'm going to add these onions. All right, we'll get the rest of these chopped up. We're going to add them in. And then we're going to add a little bit of salt on top. Now, onions, when you go to caramelize them for this dip, you really want to caramelize them for quite a while. And when I say quite a while, I mean like 40 to 45 minutes. Now, if you don't have that kind of time, you can speed up the process a little bit by adding a little bit of baking soda. We're going to add a little salt. And then just a pinch of baking soda. Now we're just going to let these sit and we're just going to stir them periodically. All right, so you can see that the onions are starting to darken as they caramelize here. Now you can just keep these going. They will get nice and dark if you let them. I'm just stirring them periodically, spreading them back out so that they are, as many of them are touching that cooking surface as possible. So since we're getting really close there, I'm going to get the rest of this dip ready to go. All right, remember that bacon that we set aside? It's cooled down a bit, nice and crispy. We're going to go ahead and chop that up. Salad choppers are the easy way to do this. All right, so to the bacon, we are going to add a little bit of sour cream. Plop that in. We're going to add a little bit of cream cheese. Nice and softened cream cheese. And this will melt and come together a little bit better once we have those onions in there. Now we need to add our cheese. So we have a couple different kinds that we're using here. I've got about an ounce of Gruyere, an ounce of Swiss, and an ounce of some nice white cheddar. So we'll save a little bit of this cheese mix to go on top of our dip before we throw it in the oven. But the rest, we're going to put right in the mix. All right. 
Like I said, we'll just reserve a little bit here. Then we can sprinkle on top. So go ahead and give this a stir. Like I said, this will start melting once we put those nice caramelized onions in here. We're going to add a little bit of beer. They recommend an IPA for this dish. So we're going to take about a fourth of a cup and we're going to add that in. So we're just going to make sure that the heat's turned up and we are going to just cook this a little bit until that beer reduces. You can see how it's reducing already. We already have a lot less liquid in there that we had a couple of minutes ago. All right, we're going to give that just a moment and let it reduce a little bit more and then we're going to mix it in with our cheese dip. Our onions are just about ready. This is the garlic and brie baker. This is actually what we're going to put our dip in because we're going to throw it in the oven to bake it a little bit. Really get a nice brown, um, crispy cheese top on there. All right, so we can go ahead and turn the heat off and we're going to take Look at those nice caramelized onions. And we're going to throw these right in with our cheese and our sour cream and our bacon. Go ahead and give this a mix. Get those cheeses melting. You can see how nicely they are melting and mixing in and the dip's getting smooth. Now this is going to be a great dip to serve with some veggies or crackers or even just some tortilla chips. All right, so we're going to go ahead and take the lid off our garlic and brie baker. We're going to put this in here. We're going to put the rest of that cheese on top and we're just going to throw it into a 400 degree oven until that cheese on top is melted and browned just a little bit. Throw the rest of this cheese on top. Now after this is done baking, right before we serve, I'm going to put a little bit of fresh parsley right on top too. Let's just give it a real nice touch. All right, so we're going to throw this dip in the oven, 400 degrees, just for a couple minutes until it's all melted. All right, for dessert today, we are making a turtle fudge microwave cake. Now, in the Rock Crock, love this piece, you've heard me talk about it before, we can actually bake a cake right in here in the microwave in eight minutes. And I'm going to show you when we pull it out, it's going to be pulling away from the sides of the pan. It's going to be just bouncy, light, fluffy, delicious. and. I'm not even going to grease the rock crock. I'm not going to put anything in there. In fact, I'm going to mix my cake mix right in there. Now, this is a super fun recipe. It's super easy because all we're going to do is we're going to take our cake mix. It can be any kind of cake mix you want, really. But for this recipe, we're doing a chocolate. We're going to take that and we're going to mix it with a can of beer. And that's it. We don't need to worry about eggs oil, anything else. You can mix a chocolate cake mix with your favorite soda. Um, I've seen people make them with wine, like chocolate with red wine. Really, just the 12 ounces of liquid in with your cake mix. Um, just a regular size box of cake mix and that's all you need. So we're just going to pour this in. We're using a chocolate box today. Figured that would be appropriate for our chocolate cake. We're just going to whisk it together. If we're going to make a chocolate cake, we might as well give it some extra nutrients. So I'm going to add a packet of our pea protein. And now we're going to have protein in our cake. And you won't be able to taste it. And even better, since it's a chocolate cake, it's a nice dark color, we can add some kale and fiber. So now when my family eats this cake and all of our guests at the party, they're going to get a little bit of kale, they're going to get some extra fiber in their diet, and they're not going to be able to tell. So you can see I added them in, but I'm just going to mix them in, and you won't be able to see them at all. 
I'm going to go ahead and cover this and we're going to throw it in the microwave for eight minutes. We need to finish getting things ready for our cake. So I said it's a turtle fudge microwave cake. We are going to be mixing together some sweetened condensed milk and some caramel and that is going to go on top of the cake. And then we're going to make a beautiful homemade ganache. I'm actually going to get the whipped cream started right now while we're waiting for the cake in the microwave. We're just going to take some heavy whipping cream in the whipped cream maker and we're just going to fill it up to that little line right here. All right. And then we're going to add just a little bit of vanilla. and about a tablespoon or two of powdered sugar, depending on how sweet you like your whipped cream. I know some people like it really sweet. Others don't like it that sweet at all. So that's up to you. That's what's great about making your own is you have total control. All right, we're going to put this lid on and we're going to pump for about 30 seconds. You do want to check your uh, whipped cream periodically because if you whip it too much, you're going to end up with butter. It makes butter real quickly. Now, once we really have nice thick whipped cream, we're going to see um, almost some pillars of whipped cream inside here, but we're almost there. There we go. And there's those pillars I was talking about. You can see it's nice and stiff. So we've got our whipped cream ready to go. And we're going to mix together that caramel sauce and the sweetened condensed milk. Go ahead and pour that in. And we're just going to mix the two of these together. And we're going to pour this mixture on top and let it really soak into the cake. The cake is already going to be nice and moist because when you make it in the microwave, you, get, you keep a lot more moisture than you do if something's made in the oven. So it's already going to be a nice moist cake. But we're going to add this in and it'll just make it gooey and delicious. So just kind of mix those together just like this. All right, I have the cake out of the microwave. Can't wait to show you this to you. Oh, look at how steamy that is. All right, we've got this nice, light cake all ready to go. All we're going to do is we're going to take a spatula or a spoon, whatever you have. We're going to poke some holes all over it. And then we're going to pour in that mixture. And when you first pour your mixture in, it's going to look like there's a big pool of caramel and sweetened condensed milk sitting right on top. But as you let it sit for a few minutes, it's all going to soak into that cake. We're going to set this aside while we finish making our ganache. All right, so for our ganache, ganache is a fancy word for creamy, delicious frosting. It's actually French. And so we're going to I'm going to show you how to make a really, really simple ganache, all right? So we're going to use two ingredients, your homemade whipped cream and chocolate chips. All right, so we've got measurements right on the batter bowl here. We need about a cup of chocolate chips. And then we're going to take this whipped cream that we made and we're going to put about half of it into the chocolate chips. What we're going to do here is we're actually then going to carefully, slowly heat it up and some of this whipped cream is going to melt as it heats up in the microwave, um, but it's just going to be enough to melt the chocolate. And we're going to make this nice creamy mixture and then we're going to fold in the rest of the whipped cream to make a nice light and fluffy frosting. As you can see, after 30 seconds, we're starting to melt that chocolate a bit, but we need a little more time. So I'm going to throw this in for another 30 seconds and then it'll be ready to go. All right, so now it's been a total of one minute. And as you can see, it looks like it might need more time, but it really doesn't. So we're going to just give this a nice stir until we have a nice, smooth chocolate cream mix here. You can see how it changes as we mix it, right? It gets smoother. You can see that chocolate's melting. We're going to take the rest of our chocolate and we're going to fold it in. Now, folding means that we're going to mix it gently because we've got this nice, light whipped cream, right? 
And we want the whipped cream to stay as nice and light as possible. So we're going to gently fold. So I'm going to show you how we do that. Just get the rest of this whipped cream out of here. Okay. And we just big mixes, big and slow. We're not vigorously mixing it like I was with the chocolate a minute ago. And you'll know it's ready when we have a nice even color, this nice light brown color. You can still see streaks of whipped cream, streaks of chocolate. So we'll just keep going. That is our nice light creamy ganache. You can see that most of our caramel mixture has soaked into the cake. So all we're going to do is we're going to take this ganache and we're going to put it right on top. And then, of course, since this is a turtle fudge cake, you can top this with your favorite chopped walnuts. You can leave it without nuts if you'd like. You can also give it a different unique flavor by chopping up some of your favorite candy bars. Snickers on top of here is real good. We're just going to let this sit, let it cool for a little bit. Now this is a cake that you scoop out with a spoon, so we're going to serve this with a spoon when it's time to eat. All right, our soup is almost ready. We just need to add a couple more ingredients. First, we need to thicken up our soup with a little bit of butter and some flour. So we're going to go ahead and put the lid on and hit custom blend and we're just going to mix it like this. All right, we're just going to mix that in. That butter is going to melt real quickly since we have nice hot soup. All right, and now we're going to add cheese. All right, we're going to let our soup sit right there. We're going to get ready to pour this into a bowl. Get ready to check on our meatballs. But remember I said we've got one more thing to go on top of this soup, and that is some homemade popcorn. So let me show you how that's going to work. All right, so we're going to use our microwave popcorn popper here. Just expand that, open it up. We use the little cup on top to measure out our kernels. I love buying kernels of popcorn because it's much less expensive than buying already popped popcorn or the bags. Plus, we're going to have a lot less chemicals in our popcorn by using um, the popper here. Now, we have some options. We can put a little oil in here. We can put butter in here. We could air pop it, whatever floats our boat. I think I'm just going to air pop this popcorn today so that we can go on top of our soup and it'll be nice and light and fluffy. So I don't have to add anything else. It's just the kernels of popcorn. I'm going to throw this in the microwave until it's almost done, you know, just like a bag of popcorn once you hear it's starting to slow down. But we're not going to use the, uh, the popcorn setting. I'm just going to put it in. It usually only takes a couple minutes. So we'll get this popping and I'll be right back. All right, guys, we are ready. We have our fantastic recipes all ready to go for game day. So let's get everything ready to go. So of course we have our wonderful beer cheese soup. It is so cheesy and delicious lift this off here. We're going to get some poured into a bowl. All right, pour some in there. Now, remember we have some fresh popcorn to top it off. Look at this, fresh out of the microwave, light and fluffy. We're going to put just a couple pieces of popcorn right on top of our soup. And we cannot forget our beer bread which, remember I told you how much I love my stoneware? Check this out, guys. The whole loaf just plops right out. So we can take that out, cut a slice of beer bread to go with our beer cheese soup. All right. We got to check on our meatballs. Oh my gosh, you guys, I wish you could smell everything through the TV, through the computer. These meatballs smell amazing. Look at those. We're going to get a couple of these dished up. Give them a try. Mm -hmm. 
And then, of course, our caramelized onion dip. So this went in the oven, and we've got a nice brown, golden brown top on there. It's so cheesy. We're going to just take some of this cheesy dip, and we're going to serve it on chips today. So I hope you enjoyed today's recipes. I hope you find this really helpful when you're getting ready for your uh, Super Bowl party. If you're looking for any fun recipes and you're looking for more information about the products we use today, head on over to PamperedChef.com. You can search for me, Rachel Hansen, or your local Pampered Chef consultant. And as always, I want to give a special thank you to Sunshine Supper for letting us use their amazing kitchen. And thank you guys for joining us. We'll see you next time.